What's up guys? We're not staying here. We're going to Manny's. We're back again with Manny over here, and last time, if you guys remember, uh, Manny just started this really cool song, and he got to give you a few tips. That video was so well received, and we're back here to find out what he's been working on, and maybe we can learn a little bit more from him. Also, make sure you watch until the end because we've got a giveaway today. Last time, Manny showed us some really cool plugins, and we're giving away one of those, the big one, Fry Rom by Sonable. But to find out how you can win it, you gotta watch till the end and I'll give you all those details. You guys probably remember Charlie too. Charlie's in the exact same spot that he was in that last video. I think this is his favorite spot, at least when I'm around. With the exact same emotions. <laughs> when I walked in today, I was super impressed by the bass sound in this song. It was so clean and the kick drum came out so well and, I'm, and, and I was just thinking to myself, it must be these awesome speakers that you've got here but I'm thinking like, when I go and play this, I'm playing it on my iPhone or if I'm playing it on my computer at home, how the heck am I gonna make it sound decent when I don't have these, you know, multi-thousand dollar speakers at home? We don't want things to sound good here because it's here. Yeah. We want it to sound good because it just sounds good. So right. there are some tips and tricks with yeah. bass we can show. So what's been going on since the last time we met? So I have worked more on that same beat. We've got it to uh, basically being finished. It's now in Pro Tools. The whole arrangement is flushed out. We have some transitions at the end of the verse. We have cymbal swells and, and stuff coming in and out. And then by the time the last chorus hits, we have guitars coming in. We have another bass sound. And uh, we even have some DJ scratches. We have two basses, so that's Trillion playing a sort of live sounding bass. We have the bass synth that goes along with the Trillion bass. They play together during the course. Okay. So not a What whole are you lot. using for the bass synth? We are using output substance. Okay. Running in contact. Then we also added drums up here in Pro Tools, some machine sounding drums, drum machine, and then we also have some live sounding drums. It's kicks and snares. Yeah. Completely artificial machine sounding. That's cool. There's actually three kicks and three snares. A uh, drum kit. So live sounding coming out of Addictive Drums, XLN Audio. Um, so in total, you've got like four snares. I spend so much time just finding one snare that I'm satisfied with. <laughs> you're, you ended up looking for four snares that all come together yep. to get that one sound that you're looking for just for the snare. So it gives us, you know, more width there. When you were constructing this song, how did you decide to put the guitar in there? Do you usually try a bunch of different things and like, oh, that sits pretty well? Or did you actually hear it in your head and say, I need a guitar? All I knew is that the chorus was kind of boring. So I wanted to add some rhythm, something that added some texture or some movement. And we okay. can hear that real quick. We have the DJ, um, Scratch Samples. That is coming out of a plugin by UVI. They recorded a bunch of DJ samples, yeah. Scratch Samples. You get access to each individual sample, which we used a little bit. Then they also have loops. For this bass line, we have Trillion playing uh, sort of a live sounding bass, and then we okay. have Output playing the synthy bass. In both cases, we have FryRom as being the first plugin that they see. We've got the Smart EQ, and we've got Proximity EQ, and we've got Entropy EQ. This time around, we're using Smart EQ. On the left, we have what Trillion is getting treated with. Basically, we have let FryRom listen to our bass sound and analyze it. I don't know what kind of voodoo they're doing, but they're doing some stuff, and it comes up with this filter response. 
response. So this filter response will sort of restore spectral balance, basically. And you can see we have cleaned up the trouble a lot. And the reason that we did that is because if you look at this one, this going onto the output substance base, which is that synth base, and you can see that we're focusing on the treble. And we've actually rolled off the base. And you can see here, this is a smooth response. This is much like a regular EQ. So you have two different modes of operating. You can use it like a regular EQ, and at the same time, you can also get this uh, filter response, this magic that is the smart EQ. Now this is the plugin you guys are gonna be able to win and you get those three things with it. So remember, watch till the end and uh, yeah, that's good enough. So we have two really interesting things that we wanna show. The first being Surfer EQ made by Sound Radix. This is an EQ plugin. You notice these values, one, two, four, five. We also have frequencies, 110, 220, 440. Normally you'd pick those spots in the spectrum and you'd turn them up or turn them down. If we play this real quick, you're seeing what's happening is that it's moving around as the notes of the bass line are coming in. So this EQ is watching what bass notes are played, and then applying my EQ to those specific notes based on harmonics. So on the first harmonic, which for this specific note that I last played, it happened to be at 41 hertz. The next note that comes is probably not at 41 hertz. I didn't sit there and do a bunch of painstaking automation or math or anything. I just told Surfer EQ to surf. It's gonna keep track of what notes come and it's gonna move it. And in fact, all of these four bands that are turned on are all surfing. So they're all doing the first, second, fourth, and fifth harmonics of the bass note that comes. Why are those harmonics so important? Having higher harmonics tricks our brains into hearing the fundamental. So that means that if I'm listening in earbuds or on a laptop that can't reproduce 41 hertz, that's okay because these upper harmonics at 80, at 160, at 200, they're gonna go ahead and make my brain sort of hear 40. So this is what would help me still get a good listening experience on another device that can't play yep. some of those lower frequencies. Yeah. It's not completely perfect, right. but it's better than not having it. And here's the second thing that's really cool about this. If this bass line was an actual bass that went through an amplifier, and we had a microphone and we recorded it, our room would have waves bouncing around. Some of them would cancel, some of them would amplify, and we'd have sort of some issues to deal with. Um, we might have sort of a hole at 40 hertz. So we're gonna use our EQ to kind of lift up 40 hertz because every time that something is in 40 hertz, it's a little bit weak because my room is canceling. Right. Or because where I put the mic and the amp is just that way that it worked out. But this was all virtual instruments. So I don't need to be fixing any problems in the spectrum. But instead, what I'm doing is I am EQing the note when it's there. So if a note is at 40 hertz, I EQ it. If that note moves to 80 hertz, I'm not EQing sort of noise or rumble at 40 still. The EQ moved to 80. And it's, again, EQing the note. The next plugin that I want to show, again, on our bass, Waves Factory Track Spacer. And so I'm gonna play this real quick and you'll see two lines. You'll see a blue line, that's gonna be our kick drum and this white line, which is our EQ response. It's basically side chaining. So you can see that this key input is the kick drum. So every time the kick drum hits, the bass gets turned down just a little bit. It's very small, it's very subtle, but that lets us hear the kick drum even while the bass is going. When the kick drum is done, the bass line returns back to its full glory. But this means that we don't have to have two instruments fighting each other for the bass. So let's go ahead and solo our bass and let's solo our kick drum. Only these two will play. It's a little glitchy, but I yes. always hear the kick drum and I always hear the bass when the kick drum's not there. Now, I did use track spacer one other, in one other instance. I was having an issue where by the end of the song, I can't really hear output substance because there's an electric guitar in the way and there's scratch samples in the way. So I have track spacer again, making room for the bass line.
So when the bass is not playing, the electric guitar can sort of rise and be be playing full. For any plugins that, that Manny is showing here, I'll put the info in the description along with some prices and links of where you can get them. All right, so that's what you've done to get the bass sounding so awesome. What else did you do to, for this mix? Slate Digital uh, Virtual Console is on everything, the mix bus or the channels, primarily using the uh, Brit 4K. We have a couple plugins here on the master from Waves, and again from Slate, they just make things sound better. The bass is going through just a little bit of pre-delay, and I think the drums. This is the drum machine channel, so we've got more of that um, slate stuff, transient designers on the snare. And then the live drums, it's getting some compression from Waves API 2500. The, the strings and the vocals and the hook are going through uh, Slate Digital again. That's the guitar and the uh, scratch samples. Something to be aware of is that when you have these plugins that they just sound better when they're in, make sure that when they're processing that they're not louder than when they're bypassed because then you just go, oh, louder sounds better. You don't even realize that you're doing it, but you say louder sounds better, so then you put them in. So you got to kind of actually tweak your gains to make sure that the in is the same as the out, then compare. If I'm sitting there deciding whether this is good or not, I'll actually have my mouse ready to bypass it. It'll be playing and I'll actually close my eyes. I won't move the mouse anymore, but I'll close my eyes and click a bunch of times. So right now, I, I don't know if I clicked either an even or an odd number of times. Yeah. So it's either on or off. That's a, that's such a good idea. Yeah, I don't know. So, then so I, you don't know whether it's on or off. Yeah, so then you're I, just listening to yeah. whether it sounds And by good. then I've already made sure the volumes are kind of the same as best I can get them. And I close my eyes and I click once. So it's either on or off or it's off or on. I don't know. And is it better or worse? And if it's better than good and if it's worse then get rid of it or change it or change the settings or try a different plugin or maybe you just don't need anything there that's a great tip yeah. i'm gonna start doing that i like that <laughs> it's kind of silly that i sit there with your eyes closed but it works you don't need to look at anything just listen you've showed all these plugins and uh, you've talked about the mix and how to get the right bass sound in there how do you know all this stuff i went to omega studios school of recording arts and sciences for about a year okay um, and i eventually interned there so interning in a studio with paying customers and real sessions with the real hardware too with, yep big mixing boards all of these plugins as outboard equipment kind of like this stuff but way more i think i learned more after going there though by using my computer, by actually working on audio. I learned so much just now, and I'm sure you guys did too. To enter the giveaway to win Sonable Fry Rom, remember you're getting all three of those tools in Fry Rom, it's awesome. And actually the thing costs like $350, so this is an amazing, amazing giveaway. To enter it, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, find the other video I did with Manny, and go watch that, because you're gonna learn a lot from that too and leave a comment. So those three things, right? Make sure you subscribe, go find the other video with Manny right here, and leave a comment. Manny, thanks so much for your time. Thanks a lot, Charlie. All right, Manny. Thank you, man. See you guys later. Awesome, right? I love the time I spent with Manny. I learned so much, and I hope you guys did too. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. Don't forget, make the music that you love, and I'll see you guys later. Enter the giveaway.